What turns you on? Physical attraction, chemistry, mutual interests, or how about budgeting? I mean, is there anything sexier than someone who keeps a spreadsheet of monthly expenses? The reality is, if we want healthy relationships, we've got to start talking about money. Here are five things you didn't know about relationships and money. Number one, money is the number one stressor in relationships. Number one, with annoying habits coming in at number two. I know it's frustrating when your partner forgets to put the milk back in the refrigerator, but that's nothing compared to clashing over cash. Nearly half of people say they have different saving and spending habits from their partners. And that can get awkward fast. In Party of Five, my character Beto takes Ella to a restaurant he can barely afford in an effort to impress her for their one month anniversary. Have you two decided? Uh, yes, I think we're going to do the Pricks Fix menu. Oh, no, wait, uh, I kind of hate Caesar salad, anchovies. Perhaps you prefer to order a la carte. Ooh, then I can get the lobster. People do love the lobster. People are also very allergic to lobster. Deathly allergic. Relationships are stressful, especially when you aren't bawling with lobster money. <laughs> Number two, love isn't cheap. You're spending more on dating than most expenses. Americans on average spent $168 a month on dating and $64 a month on grooming in preparation for the dates. That's a total of 232 bucks a month. That's the equivalent of five tanks of gas or 17 movie tickets or 60 cups of coffee. That much coffee is not good for you, but the point is that's a lot of money. 25% of single people say they avoid dating simply because it's out of their budget and 47% of cash-strapped Americans have had to get creative to pay for their dates. Beto resorts to alternative methods in order to earn money for his date with Ella. You out of your mind? Taking her to a place like this? Didn't expect her to order the lobster. And where'd you get the money to pay for any of it? Please don't tell me you sold your blood. I didn't. I sold my plasma. For those of us who don't want to resort to such extreme measures, we'll have to find another way to cough up $232 a month. Number three, salary aside, being secretive about finances is a deal breaker. 31% of people believe that financial infidelity is actually worse than physical infidelity. People would rather you cheat on them than lie about the money you spent cheating on them. It's relationship 101. Be honest, that's simple enough, right? Yet, one in five Americans say they have spent $500 or more and not told their partner. And 31% have secret bank accounts or credit cards. I mean, unless you're James Bond, why would anyone need a secret bank account? <laughs> it's no wonder 75% of married couples say that financial deception has hurt their marriage. The good news? It gets better as we get older. Number four, older couples don't worry about money like young couples do. So we know fancy dinners, Insta-worthy outfits, and extravagant dates add up. But don't worry, using money to impress a date becomes less important over time. 37% of people say that after five dates, eh, money no longer matters. And the rate of money-related breakups decreases as we get older. Number five, it's not about the size of your bank account, it's about communication. Stop hiding money secrets from your partner and start budgeting. 70% of people who have had money-related divorces cite not sticking to a budget as the reason. But if you prefer doing it on your own, that works too. In fact, it's not unusual to keep finances separate. Of the couples who have had money-related divorces, 57% of them believe married couples should maintain separate bank accounts. We know talking about money isn't the easiest thing in the world, but your relationship depends on it. What's your experience been with money and relationships? Share this video if you think talking about finances should be normal.